Guys, what's happened? It's Ken Sr. just rolling down the hill. It's 11.30 East Coast time. I uh, left the shop at 10 o'clock. Kind of bummed out, to be honest with you. Um, I just went up to the compound to give my 500 race bike a run because we got a big race coming up at Southwick and, of course, the MX Rewind. And um, it was kind of running like shit, and then I think it seized. So we've been kind of quiet. Um, the reason why we've been kind of quiet is we spent three days in the dyno room. I invested a lot of money on the dyno, just the electrical hookups, and the installation and the lighting was was well over 10 grand not even including the dyno uh, you know and um so i've always wanted a dyno because i wanted to be able to prove all my life i'm 56 years old but races i was 16 we'd, we'd see the magazine articles 20 percent more torque you know rip your house off the foundation this and that that's all pie in the sky bullshit unless you can actually measure the results because the dyno is like a freaking scale if you weigh 300 pounds you go to fat camp all summer long and you went in at 300 pounds and you come out at 299 if you're still 299 and you're still got a 44 inch waist well fat camp didn't work so i don't care if you feel better you're still fat okay so no insult to my fat friends out there but um it's the same thing with a dyno this is a dyno jet dynamometer the number one most trusted dyno in the world and we've done multiple engine builds on it we bought a, a triumph rocket from 89 horse to 148 horsepower in two days on the dyno with some bolt-on ports almost parts almost doubled the power listen I'm a motocross racer. I ride on sketchy terrain and do triple jumps and, and uh, put my life on the line. So my motor has to be literally a uh, Scott Sheik died racing last weekend. So another one of my best friends died racing. I have tons of friends that have been seriously injured. You count on your machinery. It's got to be right. There can't be any mechanical issues. Otherwise, you're not going to ride it hard. And the dyno, listen, the dyno is not the end all be all as far as I'm concerned. There's also uh, how rideable it is, but the dyno will sh show you from idle to uh, redline how much horsepower you're putting out and what the torque curve is. And of course, we benchmark every bike we built with the stock original cylinder pipe and everything else. We benchmark it. So thank you. So there's no there's no mistaking where we're starting and there's no mistaking where we're ending. And the guys that are running it have between Wizard and Jeff and Mario, there's over a hundred years combined experience wrenching there. And we have 18 guys. We, listen, um, Jimmy Laurinaitis, the the, the um, he, he's been building race engines, turbocharged race engines for 30 years. Hey, you need anything else? And uh, my guys, there's over a hundred combined years of experience. We know what we're doing. Jeff's done. Jeff's been a dyno tech for 20 something years, and he's been running the dyno jet dynamometer for 17. He's been to their school. Uh, there's the results we got on the 2021 YZ450 that we dynoed is exactly the same as motocross action got and in fact I'm sure Jeff's way more experienced than the dyno tech that they they use there they should be checking their results against ours to be honest with you but since you guys might trust a name like motocross action I'll throw that out there so what, what am I trying to accomplish well I'm trying to build the ultimate two-stroke motor and we're starting with the CR500 Honda and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a shootout we have five different exhaust pipes in stock for the 500s five <laughs> we have one one that we paid twelve hundred dollars for it's a higgy so we're, we're gonna do the work we're gonna spend the money i spent over 40 hours labor in the last three days dyno testing multiple configurations with uh on the dyno we tested we tested two different carburetors two different intakes six different jetting settings three different types of fuel and uh, two different cylinders, two different cylinder heads, four different exhaust pipes. So I have a lot of the facts. We're going to correlate them and, and bring them out. Now, I don't want to hurt any companies out there. I don't want to um, hurt anybody's business. But uh, um, I think at some point the, the, the truth has to come out as to what's working. And surprisingly, ironically, is we had a stock 98 CR500 with just a FMF baffle slipped on it that was actually bone stock down to the pipe it put down 53.8 horse after all of our finagling we took my my tired 97 my tired abused 97 which had 51.8 horse and we got it to like 52 horse after trying all that stuff so the one thing i will tell you um bp you know we're gonna share our journey with you guys it'll be a success story at the end because we'll know what works and what doesn't work for for motocross you know if you're a hill climber and you want to 72 or a 78 horsepower top end motor or if you're a um if you're a uh, 
a kart rock racer and you're going to be 9,000 RPM the entire race. That's one thing. But we're racing around national tracks. We're racing. We're not racing around in sand pits. We're not riding in my backyard. We're racing at freaking national tracks. Unadilla and Southwick. There's no better test of a motocross bike anywhere on the freaking planet than Southwick and Unadilla. You've got sand and you've got hard pack. Hills, everything. Uh, so, so we were going to try them under multiple conditions because different engine parameters will work in different conditions. Your engine will slip in some areas, uh, you know, on hard pack and, 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 and uh, spin on sand too. So we're going we're gonna to figure it out. We're going to find the best common denominator and also gearing. We're going to go through some gearing changes anywhere between a 48 and a 52 tooth rear sprocket. Try out a bunch of different things. Well, why, why should you watch this? Well, it's going to benefit you so you don't have to waste your hard earned money. We, 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 we spent we spent eight hundred dollars on a carburetor uh, that came modified, and on the dyno, it, it, they they claim ten percent increase in horsepower. In fact, I don't want to get too much into the details because I have a moral dilemma right now as to how much I I I, I say um, until I have one hundred percent of the facts. Because the guy who sent me the carb said he's going to send me another carb free of charge, set up a different way. But we tried every, every form of jetting, every air fuel mixture, um, and it didn't increase the horsepower really uh, significantly on the top or bottom without taking away from someplace else. And the net result was it was less than two horsepower. It was not nowhere near a 10% gain, which would have been uh, five, five horsepower. And their claims of it giving so much horsepower it's gonna damage your transmission are frankly bullshit. And so let's go back to my childhood when I was a kid, couldn't rub two nickels together and you'd, you'd, you'd save up all your money for that expansion chamber or that pipe. and. The, who really knows if it gave more power or less and, and where across the, the, the range. So the, these things need to be tested and there's a huge lack of, of, of uh, on the internet of people reporting because let's face it, the, the big manufacturers coming out with this stuff, whatever the, the big man, whoever they are, you fill in the blank there and the small manufacturers uh, and uh, mom and pop shops that do speed shop stuff, they're only reporting on their stuff. They're not dyno tuning other stuff. And I, I was up at two o'clock searching the internet for accurate CR500 dyno reports there's really jack shit out there. Jack shit for, for, for good, good, clear, concise video of exactly what happened as they changed the bike, what the stock horsepower was. Johnny Letty from the UK probably has the best videos out there that explain it the best. And his were done six years ago. Not that anything's changed on the 500, but I want to bring some accurate, modern, um, relevant, because not everybody can afford a, a $10,000 Liger motor. Um, Accurate reporting on how to get the most most power out of your motorcycle. So yeah, I'm a little fired up. I got a lot of skin in the game. Um, my guys could have in 40 hours probably repaired 10 motorcycles that we could have sold for 50 or 60 grand. Um, I've got 120 bikes waiting to be serviced. So we put everything on the back burner because I need to know. I need to know which pipe is the best, which carburetor is the best. We're gonna try the Electron, the PJ, the, the PWK, the the um the, the PWK. Keyhan with the stick mod. We're going to try all of them. We're going to try the Boyce and Rad valve. We're going to try the tap Moto Tassinari, um, their, their valve. We're going to try uh, different intake spacers. There's a couple cart sites that have uh, really inexpensive spacers, like 3 8 inch spacers. Uh, and there's some high-end sites that have billet ones that are shiny and beautiful for 200 bucks. So we're going to try different stuff and tell you what works and doesn't work. So I'm pulling in the shop. I think my motor seized. There she is, my trusty old CR500, back-to-back 500cc grass drag and 500 shootout champion that bike is. And I also won the Northeast Regional Vet Championship on it. The way it was, stock with a gnarly pipe, a Boyson uh, valve and uh, reed valve, and that's it, stock. Stock with a pipe, silencer, and a twin air filter. And that's probably more horsepower than more, most mere mortals need, but hey, if, if a lot is good, then much more must be better, and that's what we're working for. We're working towards much more. That's enough out of me. If you're wondering why we've been quiet, I just pulled in the shop here, passed back to work at o'clock last night trying to figure this out, studying dyno reports, and then up to two o'clock in the morning, totally obsessed with this, and it's been, I've been obsessed with this for actually months uh, leading up to buying the dyno, installing the dyno, um, getting everything set up and then try, trying dynoing. We did the 250 dynos, we dynoed a, a 2000. We dynoed about, I don't know, 12 bikes so far. We've done 40 some odd dyno runs just on my, my 500 with 11 different, 11 or 13. I know it's not six or nine, uh, I lost count, but each dyno report says this brand exhaust, this brand carburetor, this brand head, 
whatever it is. So um, it's all documented, and we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching, and God bless America. Put in the comments what your thoughts are, I mean, about your experiences buying hot rod parts that, that may or may not work. Um, and and what, what, what do you think? Who do you think does the best cylinder porting in the country? Is it is it one of the big companies or is it one of the smaller companies? Who does the best cylinder porting? Who does the best compression release heads? Who does the best exhaust system? Well, there's not many uh, uh, exhaust port companies. There's just MSV in stock, so uh, we'll, we'll test those. Supposedly, MSV, Ben Probes, my friend, said he got two horsepower more with the MSV exhaust port. He said he got two horsepower more with Electron. He said they kind of added up, and he got 72 horse on a um, on a big bore uh, CR500 porter for hill climbing, but we, we he doesn't he hadn't he doesn't have a way to share that with the world because he didn't take any videos we're going to document it along with ben's advice and a bunch of other people's advice and everybody that we're buying the parts from we're going to give them the um the opportunity to help us tune their products the best they can so we can give you the best information there is on the planet on how to make your bike faster and i think with, with jeff castine the wizard me jimmy and the uh, mario testa we've got a kick-ass team and the rest of the guys um we probably have one of the best teams short of maybe like a, a pro circuit for, for or, 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 you know, as far as smaller, sh smaller shops, 20 guys. I don't even know how many guys pro circuit employers employs. Maybe we have more guys than they have. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But um, we're just focused on our side of the street. We're going to keep our side of the street clean. We're going to keep busting our ass around the clock to bring you guys the information you need to make your bike faster. Thanks for watching. Love you all. God bless.